a two-way stop, we and the vehicle coming from in front have a stop if we're on a two-way street, but the vehicles coming from the sides don't have one. If we're on a one-way street, only we have a stop, obviously, since there won't be any vehicles coming from in front. I'll still be referring to both these situations as a two-way stop, though, because it's more or less the same principle. Basically, in both situations, we have a stop and the vehicles coming from the sides don't. So how do you determine if it's a two-way or a four-way? First, sometimes we can get an idea even from far away. If you're approaching a stop and you see that the vehicles on the perpendicular axis are crossing the intersection at full speed, it means they probably don't have a stop. And I say probably because a lot of people don't necessarily come to a complete stop, but at least most people that don't will slow down considerably. So you'll still need to check the following points, but it gives you a hint. Then as you get closer, you can look to see if there's a stop line on the asphalt on their side. So if there's a line, there should be a stop. But there also might not be a line there, since they tend to disappear over time. There might also be some secondary panels under the main panel that tell you who has a stop at the intersection and who doesn't. Like in this case, there's a little stop sign on every edge, so everybody has a stop. But again, not all stop signs have these sub panels. So the most absolute way of knowing is to look for the back of a stop sign on the other axis. Like I said in the previous video, it's the only traffic sign that has an octagonal shape, so you can recognize it from behind. So in this case, it's a stop for everybody. When it's a two-way stop though, most of the time, after having stopped, you'll need to advance until you see well to both sides before going straight or turning. And the question I get a lot is, do I need to stop first at the line and then advance slowly? Or do I advance right away to the position where I can see far enough? You do need to stop first at the line. And this for a few reasons. First, that is the stop line after all. So if you don't stop at the line, you're effectively running a stop and you can get a fine for that. Second, if when you're approaching the intersection, there's a pedestrian about to cross, you'll probably see them in time since they don't move that fast even when running. But let's say that there's a cyclist approaching fast and closer to you, you might not see them and they might not see you, especially in situations where visibility is reduced by parked vehicles, vegetation and so on. So if you advance right away to the point where you can see far enough, there's the risk of collision. Keep in mind that cyclists sometimes also ride on the sidewalk, especially kids. And another reason is that when people pop out of somewhere, it can be a bit scary, especially for beginners who tend to either brake too hard or swerve suddenly. So when people stop too far after the stop line, sometimes they give the impression that they're going to run the stop. So that might lead to sudden braking or swerving from the other drivers, which can be dangerous. And these are just a few examples. Now, some people call this a double stop, which is not always an accurate description. You don't necessarily need to stop a second time. You do need to come to a complete stop at the line. Then, if after you've advanced slowly, you see that there's nobody coming, you can go. If there's traffic, then you need to stop again for however long it takes for the traffic to pass. However, if you come to a stop where you can see well to both sides while stopped at the line and there's nobody coming, you can go normally. In fact, it could be hazardous to stop a second time if it's not necessary. For example, if when stopped at the line, you can see far enough to both sides and there's someone that stopped behind you and they can also see well to both sides and they see that there's nobody, after they see you going, they'll expect you to just keep going normally. If you stop again for no reason, they could hit you from behind. Especially nowadays, when people can't let go of their phones for half a second. Stay away from that phone when you're driving. Now here's a situation where people fail sometimes at the exam. They come to a complete stop, then they advance, and they don't see any vehicles coming from the sides. So they start going normally, and then they get braked by the examiner because they didn't give priority to the pedestrian about to cross the street on the other side. Beginners tend to have tunnel vision. In a situation like this one, you stop, you do your first verifications, and then you advance until you can see far enough to both sides, and then after having checked for traffic, before you go, do a visual sweep of everything in front of you. Be aware of what's going on on the other side of the street, and not only on the street itself. Remember, there's not only motor vehicles on the roads. Also, while you have no other choice but to advance until you see far enough, try as much as possible not to block traffic. Like here, I can see well from this position, so there's no need to go further for now. 
I'm not blocking anybody in this position since there are parked cars in this lane. But in reality, I could already see that pedestrian as I arrived at the intersection. I knew that by the time I was ready to go, she'd be about to cross. So remember to look far and wide and anticipate. So, the whole procedure when coming to a two-way stop, as you're approaching, analyze already from far to get an idea of what's going on, then stop at the line and do your first verifications to see if there are pedestrians or other road users that use the sidewalk, then advance slowly until you can see far enough to both sides for vehicles or other users on the road itself. Then one last visual sweep before you go, and if the coast is clear, go. Now in terms of priorities at two-way stops, like I said earlier, the vehicles coming from the sides don't have a stop, so you'll need to yield to them. And this, no matter how many of them there are. You might need to wait a second, or 30, or a minute, or whatever amount of time, it doesn't matter. They have priority. As for the vehicles coming from the front on a two-way street, priorities don't matter if the vehicles don't cross each other's path. Like when they're both going straight, or they're both turning right, for example. In other situations, here's how priorities work. Whoever arrived at the stop first has priority. So if the black vehicle wants to turn left and the red one wants to go straight, the black one has priority since he arrived first. If both arrive at the same time and one wants to turn left, whoever is going straight has priority, in this case, the red vehicle. If both arrive at the same time and one wants to turn right and the other wants to turn left, the one turning right has priority. In other words, the one that has less distance to cover. Now that being said, if you're in a situation where someone doesn't respect your priority, yield to them anyway. Safety is the most important thing here. I'll do a video specifically on priorities soon. In the next video, four-way and always stops, which are not always the same. So stay tuned and see you soon.